Hi guys, I'm coming at you from the greenhouse today and I know I haven't done a video in a while so I want to fix that and I thought for this video I might tell you about how I got into succulents and kind of a timeline of you know where I started, how long I've been doing it, where I'm at now um, and then I also want to show you a few things that I bought just recently and some things I got for um, in some trades and then at the end I want to talk to you about just kind of some you know the, the biggest things I've learned from collecting succulents and so if you don't want to hear all the story then go ahead and scroll to the end but anyway um, just to get started you know a lot of people think that I've been doing succulents for many many years and the truth is once I got to looking through my photos on Facebook I found out I've only been doing it um, for only a couple years so it's really gotten big really fast as far as my collection and you know what I've learned but um, long story short, uh, I think that you don't have to do it for years and years to get really good at it. And I'm not saying I'm the best, but I have learned a lot in a short period of time. And I credit that to YouTube videos and Facebook things. So anyway, um, I really haven't talked much about myself in my videos. And so I thought I may do that today. So my name is Amanda and I work in healthcare, so I love helping people and that's one of the reasons I started this channel because I want to help people learn how to take care of succulents and love them like I do and so it's just one of my things that I, I love to do for fun and so that's why I like you guys um, suggestions on what I uh, should do videos on. So. Before I got married in 2017, I lived alone and I lived in a condo and I was interested in plants, but I knew nothing about succulents. And I did have a shelf in my house with some T5 grow lights and I grew things like basil, rosemary. I had a Venus flytrap, kind of a couple random things. And then I got interested in hydroponics on from a YouTube video. So I started doing that. I built my first hydroponic system and it worked really great. I grew basil for my first hydroponic plant and I'm going to try to import as many pictures as I can but I remember the first time I grew basil hydroponically the leaves were as big as my hand so I'm going to see if I can find pictures of all these things and import them so hopefully I can. Anyway um, that's what I did when I was alone. I did grow some other random things like I, I grew the top off of a pineapple and I still have it today. It's right over there in the greenhouse. Um, I grew a star fruit because I bought one from the grocery store and I thought I would try to grow a seed and I have that tree still today. It lives in here because it can't survive our winters. I grew a lemon tree and a key lime tree and they're only maybe three or four feet tall but I still have them in here from even then. So. I got married in 2017 and I got married to the best guy in the world so in case you're wondering he is in a few of my videos although they have nothing to do with succulents but if you're just curious about him he's in some videos and he said he wanted to do a video so I let him do one but anyway he's really great because even though building is not his profession he loves to build and he loves architecture so in December of 2017, I got married in September. In December, he said he was going to build me a greenhouse because he knew how much I love plants. And he also loves plants. He does not love succulents. He likes outdoor plants. He likes azaleas, hostas, hydrangeas. But he's never really shown much of an interest in succulents yet. I'm working on that. Now, he built me this huge greenhouse that I'm sitting in today, and it's a 20 by 20, but it's the best thing ever. It's my, it's my she shed, I guess, but it's got a, um, it's, it's got a uh, concrete uh, slab, and it's heated in the winter, and it's got ventilation in the summer, and he even put a fridge and a sink in here and piped in the gas so the heat would be through a gas heater. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's a TV back there too. And I never use it, but we had an extra one. So anyway, when I first got this greenhouse, the only thing I had in it was, you know, my star fruit, a couple, um, you know, my lemon tree, my pineapple and things like that. And so it sat here for a while and had those things in it. I think maybe a few flowers that he had but um, 
I then got into another hobby. I got into soap making, uh, handmade soap. And so I did that for a while. I did some craft fairs and then I got into growing loofahs because when I found out that it was an actual plant and not a sponge from the ocean, I knew I had to grow it. So I asked my husband if he would build me a pergola, which at the time he didn't even know what it was, but he went ahead and I showed him a picture. He went ahead and built me one. So now each year I grow loofahs and I still make soaps, but I, I love succulents more than my soap making. Uh, so I did some craft fairs and things with that. And then uh, one of the things I had in my greenhouse was a little aloe vera plant that my mom got me from a trade that happened at the library that she works at. It was just a tiny little plant, you know, no bigger than five or six inches. And I was really proud of it because it did grow while I was at my condo and then it grew here in the greenhouse and I went ahead and kept putting it into bigger and bigger pots and over time it's multiplied and now it's in a pot that is so big I, I would say there's at least 50 plants just in that one pot and I've also separated it probably 10 or more times so it has given me so many plants so that is the very first I guess succulent that I ever got and that's what kind of got me into it um even then, I still had the aloe vera, and I didn't really start buying succulents, but I did really love that one. Um, and then I started doing square foot gardening, which was, you know, vegetable gardening outdoors. I had my husband help me build some uh, raised garden beds, and I did that. I, I would grow herbs to put in my soaps, you know, like lemongrass and lavender and things like that. Uh, then I got interested in desert roses, and I don't remember where I learned about them, but I went ahead and I bought some seeds on eBay. You know, eBay is kind of sketchy as far as their seeds, but I bought some seeds and sure enough they sprouted, and I still have one that I've kept from that very first time I ever planted any seeds. Now, I've sold most of the rest, and I went ahead and brought it right here just because I wanted to show you guys. So this is my desert rose that I started from seeds and that was about the end of 2017. So right after the greenhouse got started, no, it was actually 2018 closer to the summer because it was right after we started the raised garden beds. But as you can see, it's, it's a pretty good size and I do still grow them from seed and I have some babies. Sorry, there's a spider, you guys. And, uh, but anyway, so that's when I really started thinking I like this, what is this, and learned it was a succulent. So I went into a phase for a while where I did some painting, and I still do painting to this day. Um, I kind of got sidetracked with my plants because my husband bought me the dog that I've always wanted, and that was a Shiba Inu, and that was in December of 2018. And I was still doing soaps and things at that time. But soon after that, I learned about propagating leaves, and I saw that you can grow entire plants from leaves and I think that just really made me intrigued about them. So I started propagating leaves and at the time I got the trays and I would lay them out just one by one and I'd make them look really fancy, you know. Uh, I do not do that now. I literally throw them in a box lid as you've probably seen from my other videos. But at that time I was very OCD about it so I would lay them out one by one and when I started getting plants, I got so excited. So after that, I started looking around at the succulents at the stores and I bought my first succulent, which was a jade plant. And I had it for a very long time before I made my first video on repotting. And I wanted to show you guys that because you've probably seen it if you've seen my video about repotting succulents. So this was the very first jade plant that I ever bought. This is the actual pot that I put it in when I repotted it. And it still looks great to this day. It may be a little thirsty, but still looks wonderful. And I've never been a big fan of jade, but I wanted to show people that for the repotting video. And um, so anyway, so that's there. After that, I started buying little by little. I think I bought an Echeveria Lola, some different things. And I'm gonna try to post some pictures of some of the first plants that I bought because I'm gonna go through my timeline and my pictures and show you. But after that, it was on 2019 when, the, when spring rolled around, I learned that you could grow things outside. I was watching other channels, 
several in particular if you're interested let me know there's there's one that's really my favorite there's a guy who grows them outdoors year round and that made me decide I want to grow one outdoors and that's a little bit harder because I live in Little Rock Arkansas and we have very high humidity we may have days where it's it rains for well, we may have weeks where it rains for the entire week so we do have very high humidity. In fact, the humidity right now in the greenhouse is 91%. So I've had to make some adjustments and learn how to really increase my airflow, but it can still be done. And outdoors, it's actually a little bit easier. So I started my first outdoor garden in 2019 in the spring. And that was actually my first YouTube video, I believe. I decided I wanted to start doing YouTube videos because I would have people ask me about succulents and how to care for them. And after explaining some things several times, I thought maybe I'll make a video and help people and I'll just refer them to the video. So then I did the video about how to make the outdoor garden and it did look pretty good, but it looks nothing like the one I did this year, which is way greater. And I'm not even done with it, but I love the one I made this year. It is so pretty. And I have some videos on how I did that. I think I have three or four videos putting it together and it's pretty much done. There's a few blank spaces that I could fill in, but I really love it and it does great. Uh, it rained all day today and it rained all last night and I'm not worried about it in the least, but if it did rain for six or seven days, I may try to put something over it, but um, it's doing great. So anyway, I did my first outdoor garden. I really started feeling more confident with keeping succulents alive. I could keep them alive. They were really doing great in my greenhouse. They were doing great outdoors. They were making pups. So I started to do talks for some local plant clubs. People would come to me about that. I did a few of those. And then finally I decided I'm gonna start a local group for people who love succulents. So I started a group, it's called Central Arkansas Cacti and Succulents, and it's really for anyone in Arkansas and even other people who aren't if you just want to be in it. But I started it and I remember I was so excited when I had maybe 20 members because I thought there are finally some people around here who love succulents as much as me. And of course, re uh, fast forward to now, we have almost a thousand members and we have meetups and we do all sorts of things. We have groups where we trade things in the mail and it's really fun. Um, I love organizing the meets. We had a meetup just uh, June 20th. So it was a little bit different because of COVID-19. Of course, we had to wear masks and we could only have 50 people in the greenhouse. Not this one, but where we had it but it was still really fun. We traded cuttings, we sold things, we gave things away. So I've had a lot of fun with that group. And then um, in the meantime, I've also done some sales, you know, as far as just, you know, selling things on the side. I did start a Facebook group that was just for sales. And it's, it's basically for sellers in Arkansas, but anyone can join it. And I'll post links if you guys are interested, just let me know. Uh, but I've done that and then I also started an Etsy and I have to admit I really didn't I really don't put much on Etsy or at least not a, nearly as much as I should but it, it takes so much time to make a listing and I just I get so busy with taking care of everything in here that I just haven't done it um, and then finally I started importing plants I got my importing license and I started importing plants from Korea and other places and you know, when I learned about hybrids from other countries, I thought, oh my gosh, I have to get in on this. So I started importing and I have a few videos on unboxing my imports. And so they are on my channel too, if you're interested. But that pretty much leads me up to today. You know, I'm still running the club. I'm still taking care of everything in the greenhouse. I'm selling cuttings, things, you know, all my plants are making pups. They're getting big. I have cuttings of everything I can sell. And then, you know, my main thing is just taking the time to go through every one of my plants in here. And if the greenhouse was a little bit cleaner, I would actually do a tour, but not right now. So, uh, what I want to show you now are just a few things that I have here on the table. And these are things that uh, we'll just go through one by one. So, I am in a group and they do a wish list Wednesday. And of course now our group does that too, but 
I was wishing for a specific type of cactus. I was wishing for the Santa Rita cactus and a girl actually sent me three pads. So I've planted those and I just planted them maybe a week or so ago. And she also sent me some other cool stuff. She sent me three of these and from what I've learned, they're called sunburst opuntias, but the spines aren't really bad. You know, I can touch them and I'm not getting baby spines in my hands. So they're a little bit different from the, uh, the Joseph's coat, although they do look similar, but I, I've learned it's something different. So I really like these and I got three of them. So they're potted up in dry dirt. I put some rocks around them so they wouldn't fall over, but I have three of those. And then this is something I bought. I know it looks really sad, but this is a topsy-turvy. I have a lot of topsy-turvies and most of them are outside and they make tons of babies. But I bought this even though it looks so sad because it's crested. And when you get a succulent that's crested, that just means kind of it's an abnormality when it starts growing. So you may see some succulents that just look like a big monstrous, you know, thing. And I have some like this, but I've never seen a crested topsy-turvy. So I bought it. Um, I want to show you one of my favorite Echeverias of all time. This is my Echeveria Trumpet Pinky. And if you watched my video of my unboxing from Korea, you would have seen me unbox this. And I wish I would have pulled off more of the dry leaves. But this Echeveria has given me a few babies. It was just one rosette, this one right here. But if you turn it around now, you can see... She's actually produced two other rosettes. I'm just really afraid to take them apart, so I'm just kind of leaving her alone. But this is, of all of my Echeverias, I have two favorites. This is one, the Trumpet Pinky. I got her from South Korea. And then this is my other favorite. This is my Echeveria Mexican Giant. She's not very big. Now she has been bigger, but she's been through a lot. I almost killed her a few times from overwatering. Yes, I've killed plants over time. Everybody kills plants when they're learning, but she's just so pretty. She's got blue, pretty farina, pink tips, and she's been through so much, and I love this plant. So those are my two favorite Echeverias, and obviously of all succulents, Echeverias are my favorite. I just like them. They look like little roses, and you know, so... Now I want to show you what I got. Well, I got it the same day that I got the crested topsy-turvy and I'm calling this the beast. So you will not believe this. Look at this monster. This is a huge gibiflora and I've never seen one bigger than this for sale at a store. I mean, look at it. It is just a monster but she's so beautiful i don't know whether i'm gonna put her in a big pot or keep her out in my garden but i mean i could not pass it up so i bought that one it's really hard to identify uh gibifloras so i don't even want to try to but she's so pretty she's frilly and i love her and then i want to show you one other thing no two other things uh when our group just had that meetup on June 20th, and usually we just bring things that we want to trade. And I brought a few cuttings, but I also decided I was going to bring a bunch of my babies that I got from Propagation, because when I showed you all those trays where I laid things out, I didn't realize how many plants I would actually get from that, and now I have tons. So what I decided to do is I got these cute little terracotta pots from the dollar store. You get them maybe four or five for a dollar. And all of my propagations I put in these little pots. And so I brought a bunch of them to the trade and I sold them for a dollar each and they're super cute. And I'll show you the, well actually I'll just turn the camera around and show you real quick. So, well I tried to turn the camera around but the video stopped. But these square pots, these are not ones that I grew from leaves, but all these ones that you see in the round terracotta pots these are all ones that I grew from a single leaf, and this is by far not all the ones I have. I sold a bunch of them, and I have at least a hundred more behind me on my propagation shelf, but 
I've just got a little bit of everything, you know, Pearl Von Nuremberg, half these things, I don't even know what they are, but I love Echeverias, so much, most of them are Echeverias. So anyway, I'm gonna turn the camera back around now, and I'm gonna show you one last thing, kind of tell you some tips of some things that I've learned over time, and then we'll make that the end of the video. Okay, so there's only one more plant I want to show you, and then I will tell you kind of a summary of what I've learned over the years. But really, if you think about it from what I've talked about, I've really only been doing succulents for two years. So I've gone a long way, and if you guys could see my greenhouse right now, you would realize, oh my gosh, it's, it's insane. But you can do a lot in a very short period of time. But the last plant I wanted to show you was this. And this is called a fairy tale cactus. And I'm not a huge fan of cacti, although I do have some. I have way more uh, succulents than uh, cacti. And technically, cacti are succulents, but cacti are different. So this is a fairy tale cactus. I have maybe six or seven of them. I had a friend get these for me. and. The reason why I want to show you is because these are the biggest ones I've ever seen and I'm probably going to list them on my Etsy or list them for sale on Facebook, probably Etsy and then sell them bare root. But I want to show them to you because I've never seen ones this big. I've always seen the ones that are really tiny. And the cool thing is, you know, even though I have spines, you see the spines right there, you can still touch it and, and they're not going to stick in your hand. So there's nothing in my hand right now. and. I would never do that because I do have some cacti that if you even just barely touch it, you get those little teeny tiny things in there and you can't see them, but they never come out and they're awful. But anyway, I've done succulents for about two years. I've learned a lot. I obviously still have more to learn because it's not like I don't kill a plant here and there. And I think a lot of it is the Arkansas humidity here because we do have rain for days and days. And if you could see my, um, my little temperature gauge and everything in here the humidity right now is at 92 percent but like i said it poured all last night and it rained today so humidity is not great if you have humidity you need to have really good airflow surprisingly the ones that do better are the ones that i have outside and even though they get all that rain they get airflow so they're not as bad but the ones in here have it a little bit tougher but like I said, I still have a lot to learn and I learned a lot from YouTube, Facebook groups, things like that. And that's what I recommend you guys to do. So if you're a beginner or even if you're not, there's a million different sources you can find. And I learned most of what I know from YouTube and a couple different Facebook groups. And if you're interested, let me know and I can give you a link. But as far as a summary of everything I've learned, it's really hard to do that, but if I could give you the top succulent tips that I know, I only have a few. My number one tip is if your plant looks good and you're not sure if it needs water, don't water it. The only way you need to water your plant is if it shows you it's thirsty, it's either going to be really wrinkly or it's going to feel floppy. So if you are not sure, don't water it. Most people kill their plants because of overwatering. And for every 20 to 30 posts I see on websites asking what's wrong with their plant, it's, you know, 20 to 30 of them are overwatering to maybe one that is underwatering. So be very sparing with how often you water. You don't have to water a little bit, you just don't water very often. And my second piece of advice is to make your soil very well draining. So I don't feel like it's good enough for most succulents to buy that cacti and succulent mix that you see at the store. And for some of them, they're okay. Like jades are a little bit more forgiving. Some plants are a little bit more forgiving. Like my desert rose over here, it's fine. But for the most part, I mix that cacti and succulent mix with other things. I mix it with perlite. I've mixed it with pea gravel, and now my favorite thing is chicken grit because it's just crushed granite. So things drain really, really well. So if you think your soil is well draining, make it even more well draining. Don't use sand unless it's coarse sand. And if you guys can get access to things like turfus and pumice, that stuff is good too, but here it's pretty hard to find. 
Uh, my third tip is more than likely you can never give them too much sun. Same thing with the overwatering. You know, nine times out of ten, people have problems because they don't have enough sun, and so their plant's stretching out. Maybe every now and then someone shows a plant that's sunburned, but I really don't see that nearly as much. So the more sun, the better. And if you need to, acclimate it first, but get it used to as much sun as you can. If you keep it inside, use a south-facing window. If you keep it outside, keep it near the south. The more sun, the better. The afternoon heat is pretty harsh, and that's when plants tend to get sunburned, so keep an eye on them then. But really, in general, there are some succulents that don't need as much sun, you know, like things like Haworthia, aloe, things like that. But in general, you can't get too much sun. And then finally, uh, don't give up on succulents. You know, someone told me today on a comment from one of my videos, they said, you know, succulents are the cats of the plant world because they're so picky. You know, people say they're so easy, but then they kill them all the time. And they say they need a lot of water, but then they need no water. And they need a lot of light, but not too much light. So. Yes, they're easy once you learn what they need, but they're hard if you have no clue and you just treat them like a regular house plant and water them like normal and put them in a windowsill. So yes, they are like cats, but don't give up. You know, we've all killed plants. I've killed so many plants in my journey with these succulents that I don't even want to tell you, but the more you practice and the more you learn, the better you're going to get. And you're gonna be so happy with what you have and you're gonna be so proud of what you've done. And I really am happy that you guys are watching my videos. I've gotten so many subscribers just in the last month and I'm so happy that you guys are subscribed. And I want to know if you guys have any specific recommendations of things that you want me to do videos on. I'm open to any topic. Now, there's some topics I may not be a complete expert on, but I will do my best, or I can find a guest speaker even for some of them, but I'm so thankful for you guys watching. I love that you guys are watching. I love doing the videos. I'm going to do the videos whether people subscribe or not, but I really hope that if you are watching, you will subscribe. I'll do videos. I'll, I comment on every comment that is made. I love my fans, and I want you guys to love succulents like I do. So, anyway, that's a little bit about me. I hope you learned something in this video, and I'm glad that I told you a little bit about me because I really haven't in any of my other videos. But, again, thank you so much for watching. If you're not a subscriber, I hope you will subscribe. And if you do, I hope you'll also hit that bell icon because that will let you know when I post a new video. Try to post one every week if I can, but sometimes I get busy. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.